3D printing is exciting technology and has applications in engineering and design, medicine and dentistry, art and jewelry, mathematics and more. As I have been learning about 3D printing and sharing my experiences with others, I am often asked about how a 3D printer works and how I take an idea and develop it into a print. There are many different types of 3D printers, and this MakerGear M3 ID is just one example. There are also many different printing materials, and a common one that I use is a plastic called PLA, short for polylactic acid. Materials come in spools of filament. The color of the print is the color of the filament chosen. Motors on the printer feed the filament into the nozzle. In this example, the nozzle temperature is about 200 degrees Celsius. As the printer follows the commands to print a model, the hot end melts the filament and it sticks to the print bed and to the previous layers, cooling quite quickly to harden. The print continues layer by layer, building the model from the bottom up. Clearly printing in 3D is not the same as printing on paper. Even preparing a file to print has several steps. One needs to go from an idea to a model, then to creating G-code directions for the printer to follow. A first step is to get an idea. Sometimes my inspiration comes from my kids. Their play gives me an idea of something I could print for them. Let's make a Triceratops, something prehistoric using modern technology. There are lots of different ways to find models or create them. You can use CAD programs, you can pull something off the internet. I'm going to use Wolfram Mathematica to get a model of a Triceratops. So I'm going to open up a new document and we can ask for example data. And within their Geometry 3D, there is a Triceratops that we can download and use. So here's the Triceratops in a three-dimensional model. So let me just name that something. And we can export the file. And we'll export it to Triceratops.stl. An STL file is a stereolithography file. And that is one type of 3D model that many software programs and 3D printers can read. For this model, I'm going to do a little additional editing. I'm importing it into the 3D Builder program that's part of Windows. And you can see that some of the uh, places where there's corners, it's not particularly smooth. So within this program, I have the option to smooth the edges and it'll create a little bit nicer model for us to work with. Next, we need a slicer. Now that we have our model, we need to create the G-code that the printer will then read. This is Simplify 3D, and we can import the Triceratops model we created. This grid represents the print bed, so this would be a fairly large model. We can edit the size of the model, we can rotate the model, we can move it around on, into different locations on the build plate. Once the model is sized and positioned as desired, we have several different process settings to consider. Within Simplify 3D, there are numerous variations of options that can all be edited and adjusted. But really, there's only a few things that users need to pay attention to, especially when starting out. One of those items would be layer height, We'd also want to consider how many top, bottom layers and perimeter shells you'd be interested in. Sometimes I adjust the start points to control where retraction bumps would be. We would want to consider whether we need a skirt or a brim or a raft. With two color printing, we would look into things like prime pillars and ooze shields. We want to decide how much infill we're interested in, what type of infill we want. We can also set the temperatures if we want to do something different than the default. And there's other advanced settings as well. For this particular model, let's just see what we get with the default settings. So we can prepare to print, which allows us to create a preview of how the G-code will tell the printer what to do. 
Here the different colors represent different feature types. When it prints all together, it will be the same filament. So it'll all be one color. But when we look at the different features, that helps us identify things like wraps, skirts, support material here in gray, and the actual model. The print preview lets us see exactly how the print head will go along and develop the print from the bottom layers toward the top. Notice how it prints the support material along the way. We can look for things like areas that are unsupported. For example, the tip of the tail here may not print very well if it's not supported better than what was already assigned. I would be a little concerned that the tip here would have nothing holding it up except those little bits of other layers and that could cause some drooping. So maybe we would want to add some additional supports there. There might be other areas too that could have problems uh, and you can use the print preview to sort them out. The orange areas inside represent the infill. So we can see how dense it's going to be on the inside. And if you want to increase that amount or decrease it, that's a setting that's easy to control. We get an estimate on the build time as well as how much material would be used in this print. So if we wanted to, for example, add some additional support on the tail, we can have Simplify 3D generate the automatic supports and then add some new support structures here on the very end. Adding a few new support structures could improve the quality of the tip of the tail or the triceratops. Once we have all of our process settings set up as desired, we can run the preview one more time and from here we can save the G-code file. So we can save toolpaths to disks, set it up as what we want to save it as, and now the file has been exported. That file can then be moved to the 3D printer for reading and printing. This print took two hours and 47 minutes to complete. The first layer prints more slowly so that the plastic will stick better to the print bed. The raft is what is printing first. Then mostly what we see printing are the supports. If you look closely, you can see the legs and the beginning of the body. The body continues and we can more clearly see the infill and it goes on to the top layers and completes. So now that we have our print, we can take it off of the print bed and we'll remove the raft and then all of the support material that's there should just come off fairly easily. there. All right, a little additional cleanup, but we will have our print. Mm -hmm.